Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at stepper motors. So why there is a need for something like this? You have to understand, we are relying on computers more and more each day. So we need some way that our software or computers can interact with the physical world. So we need something known as computer control. Now you must have also heard uh, normal things like, you know, this air condition is computer controlled and uh, this refrigerator is computer, this washing machine is computer. All they are meaning is that computer can affect the operation of the equipment. So this is something like that. Now we need precise motion. For this application, like hard drive, in your hard drive, that arm that is going back and forth, it is using a stepper motor. And without it, it cannot reliably read or write data on that magnetic platters. So for that reason, we have to have a precision controlled system. And also for printer, printer, as you can see, like it rolls out, the paper comes out and then you have a head that is going back and forth. So how much is going back and forth, that must be controlled. And computer also need a feedback otherwise it does not know when to give off the ink like you know the let's say there is a blue circle so it has to be like off 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 print blue off 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 print blue then again like that it has to keep doing it for this reason we need precision and they, we can achieve this by many other methods like servo methods however uh, they are very expensive because of their closed loop design because they need a feedback they need like they will send signal to the motor motor will rotate and a feedback loop will uh, check how much you have it rotated so for that reason we needed something that is called open loop basically you just send the signal and you can be reasonably confident that your job was done so this is a stepper motor how does it work now i'm not gonna go in depth for it uh, you don't need to know like all you need to know is that all the magnetic rotor that things that rotate is of permanent magnet and it has spikes or teeth as it's called so does the electromagnet that is on the stator now this creates a very unique magnetic arrangement in which scenario you end up in a scenario where the teeth wants to align with itself now that alignment is the reason why the motor does not keep spinning independently because of the teeth nature it's like it always wants to snap and the count of the teeth is generally created such a way that any given moment of time it can only snap to one place so like if this is stator coil is on it will snap that way if this is on it will be off that way now the offset is the one that allows you to rotate it because if you don't have the offset all it will be like you know it will be permanently static so there is an offset now that offset and uh, coupled with that electronic control gives us what we call steps so most of you are those who have worked with stepper motors they will know like each degree of the motor is generally divided in steps and you can find a motor that has, rotates 3 degree per step 5 degree per step or 0.5 degree per steps like that's how it is so your computer knows if i send five step signal it has rotated like let's say 12 degrees so this is the core aspect of the stepper motor that's why we call it stepper motor it steps and if you give it the signal if it and it is capable of doing it like you can't move a five ton car with this so if it can handle the load it will do the job so that's why the open loop part is and the construction of it is more or less like a brushless uh, dc motor and be mindful you can't run it with a dc brushless motor drivers it needs its own driver uh, that's a kind of complex aspect of it and if you really want to go in depth there are wikipedia articles and youtube links that you can find which will do a very good job i'm just giving a basic idea that there are teeth in the rotor and there are teeth in the stator both align and that alignment only can happen at one point like this or this or this or this that's how it controls how much it rotates now what are the pros of this method one very simple pro that i have put at the top is what's called holding torque now what you have to understand about holding torque is like imagine you have a robotic arm that is going like this you have a axle that is rotating like this up and down now in normal motors uh, the servo motors you see you can do up and down however you cannot go like this and stop 
it does not have hold it now the it will go back down again so the way in servo system we use that is either we ha we have a gear system that blocks you know backwards rotation or things like that or generally we apply brakes there so the moment encoder tells yeah you reach this point it will apply a physical brake However, for stepper motors, you don't need to do that because of that teeth arrangement, it can lock onto it. So basically, if it's rotating and like, let's say it has an arm that is heavy and it's like, you know, it has to spend energy to move it up, it can actually hold it. It's like, okay, I'm going to hold it. So this is a very crucial for many robotic application, as you can see. So many times they are lifting a car and truck. Of course, they will also apply brakes because uh, holding torque is not free. You have to spend electricity on it. So they will do it. And if it's like small instant, like, you know, only for one second, they have to do like this. They wouldn't bother with brakes. But if like, let's say this robot has to lift the car and be like this for five, sec uh, five minutes until that another robot does, then they will apply brakes. But this does have holding torque. Now, I said this is open loop system. What does that mean? It does not need an encoder. It's an open system. It does not require another circuitry going back and forth that is telling whether it has it rotated or not. Has it rotated this much or not? You can add those things, but it can work without it. Uh, there is no feedback in your printer or 3D printer or most CNC also, like low level CNC, high level does have feedbacks. And it's very simple. The, because there is no brushes going around connecting anything, it's quite reliable and it can go on for decades. You can replace the, uh, keep replacing the electronics and the motor will keep running. So those are the pro. How about the cons? It has no feedback mechanism for missed step. Let's say you told it like, okay, rotate two times. Let's say it only rotated 1.7 times. There is no way in the inherent design of the motor that the driver unit will know, oh, my motor has missed. I have to overdrive it. So compensate. There is no feedback internally. You can do it externally, but then again, you again end up with a place where you have to add a encoder, rotary circuits and things like that. So this is very crucial. This is why when you have very high precision operation like medical robots or, uh, you know, robots that are doing the welding for aircraft or things like that, they always have a feedback system because it cannot tell you whether you have missed a step or not. Second, it has low torque at high speed. This is the very weird aspect of this motor very specifically because almost all motors have near linear torque like not absolutely linear but you get the idea it's more or less the same at 10 rpm it has the same torque at 50 rpm it has the same however uh, this is very crucial with stepper motors they lose torque if you rotate them very fast so let's say you have a, a cnc bed that is very long and motor has to go along it has to go very slowly otherwise it will simply you know lose its step and it has to overdrive otherwise you know because there is a lack of torque so if you are doing a cnc bit that is going on a wood and it's carving it it's a low torque no issue but you do with the steel it needs to know whether it's like you know slipping or not and if you do it very fast the motor simply does not have the torque and it requires very complex driver now this is a graph of what we call uh, driving arrangements so as you can see this is the first is wave drive we no longer use that this is full step so if you buy a controller for your stepper motor they will simply tell you how much resolution it allows you to like can it do full step can it do half step can it do micro stepping now each of this method has its own advantage like for some play application where torque is of the utmost importance you're gonna use full wave and some places where you don't want a silent operation let's say you're doing a laser cutter which does not have any you know torque application to it like it does not resist uh, laser has no resistance like a cnc milling bit has a resistance like you know there is a resistance going on you want you might want to use uh, micro streaming that will also increase your resolution so it's not that you can use one with everything but you have to pick and choose and as you can see this is what happens when a 3d printer misses its steps as you can see like it's printing the correct thing is just offset that offset happened because there is no feedback so stepper motors are quite important as i already told you it's in your hard drive in your printer in your cd drive everywhere so what's next now uh, stepper motors have a lot of potential that is untapped simply because it does not have a feedback system which we can compensate by applying a encoder pathway basically you will have the motor and you'll have an encoder on the back now that encoder will allow you to do simple things like oh my motor has missed few steps i'm gonna you know overdrive it of course software also needs to be written like this so it can actually compensate for that but this is one next step for stepper motors you can still buy this 
they are kind of expensive but uh, if you are building a cnc machine that has to work with tough materials like uh, uh, high grade aluminum or uh, very strong steel you need these sort of things and advanced stepper mo motor control as i already showed you there is a graph and uh, currently we don't have the uh, technology where to make them at cheap they are quite expensive you can buy a microcontroller that does everything however it will be very expensive so these two are the next evolution of stepper motors first the encoder will become more uh, widely spread so even normal 3d printers will start having them and of course with uh, advanced stepper motor controller you will also have a noisy uh, very le low noise stepper motor without it its motors are quite noisy now that noise comes because of is, uh, the motions that's happening and to control that you have to send the signal for as you can see they are already so complicated because it has to know the position and everything we expect to see very very advanced uh, computer control circuitry on motor itself this was my presentation on stepper motor a brief summary i hope you liked it and if you did please like if you didn't dislike leave a comment on what you want to see in next episode of science thursday and uh, as always subscribe and press the bell icon. I make video every day. And as always, thanks for watching.